Hi guys and gals, I just wanted to take a quick opportunity because I'm up to my eyes in it this week uh, with training and um, doing some processing for one of the ultimate top British architectural photographers and uh, I have to work under MDA with him quite frequently which is what I'm doing today so I can't even tell you his name and I can't show you any of his pictures uh, but <laughs> yeah well there you go so I just wanted to take the opportunity while I've got some of his camera gear here and before he turns up for his last day um, of work and um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to just mention um, sensor size and the implications of sensor size on detail levels in your image now then um, what have we got we have here two of his cameras a Fuji GFX 50 and a phase one IQ 260 yeah and we'll just start by showing you the IQ 260 and there we go long phase one IQ 260 which is probably around about 30,000 quids worth of material there in this sitting in my hand now shocking isn't it yeah and just for comparison a 35 millimeter full frame sensor there I'm just going to see if I can angle it so you can see a um, massive difference in sensor size and the you know you just have to ask yourself this why do people spend the money on these sensors because there's got to be a reason and because believe you me they don't spend it for fun who no and um, the other camera we've got is the Fuji GFX 50 and so there is the Fuji GFX 50 and again is the 35 millimeter full size or um, full res uh, sensor out of your traditional DSLR or mirrorless camera and here's an APS-C or a 1.5 crop sensor just for comparison as well so I'm now desperately going to get that covered up um, you know I mean 40,000 quid I mean <laughs> crazy but they do take beautiful photographs and I'm going to show you why um, just very briefly yesterday uh, we went out and did the ultimate test shot which of course is always a flat brick wall perpendicular to the lens axis and the camera sensor axis or plane of focus and uh, anybody who tells you that a brick wall shot is a waste of time is indeed a waste of time don't listen to them photograph trying to do constructive even playing field tests of either lens performance or sensor performance on any scene other than a flat subject is a total waste of space and um, there's so many knuckle dragging morons out there who post absolute undiluted unadulterated crap on youtube and all over the internet you see anybody who says oh you won't see any uh, brick wall shots here on my channel um yeah you won't see any common sense um, true conclusive comparisons either because they don't know what they're talking about because they're knuckle dragging morons anyway so we did this shot the other day and um, yesterday and um, I shot on the D800E with the 2470 f 2.8 at 50 millimeters and uh, we also put the took the camera off the tripod and then put the Fuji 50 uh, GFX 50 on uh, mounted with a 32 to 64 um, lovely lens but really and truly both lenses are of comparable sharpness the only thing is we have to have a conversion factor uh, between the two systems and um, if I just bring this into view the yellow is a APS-C sensor the green is a 
35 millimeter sensor so there you go you can see the difference size difference between the two and then of course the gray is the fuji gfx and the red is the iq260 now i couldn't be bothered doing this brick wall test on the iq260 because i knew exactly what it had come out like and who the hell can afford one anyway apart from joe cornish yes <laughs> sorry joe i don't think you'll ever hear this video but all said in the best of faith mate as you can see we have a crop factor for conversion then between the fuji gfx 50 or the fuji gfx 100 when anybody sees it and it will be 0.79 so because the sensor is bigger we have to use a slightly longer focal length to achieve the same angle of view for any given focal length on 35 millimeter so we should actually have shot this at 50 times 0 0.79 which works out at something like 63 millimeters and i actually just couldn't work it out in my head so i just put it up to 64 millimeters just goes to show what a pair of old codgers we are because we've both got mobile phones with calculators on but well there you go old age mate old age so if i just go and select these two shots here you're not going to see anything um, really really super duper revolutionary um, i'm fairly certain but if i just put these in uh, xy in uh, lightroom and blow them up um, this here is the size difference fundamentally um, of the slight screw up with the um, millimeter conversion focal length but here's the thing you can see on the right here is the fuji on the left here is the nikon now we've got an i'm not going to say we've got an awful lot more detail on the fuji on the right as opposed to the nikon on the left um but the detail is so much more distinct and this is where the benefit of medium format shows and of course the this medium format sensor is nowhere near as big as this medium format sensor <laughs> neither is it anywhere near the price either but this is a very 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 affordable camera in the grand scheme of things it's no more expensive really than a 35 mil dslr and you know i mean we, we, the fuji 100s come out now so this should be there should be some deals kicking around on this fuji gfx 50 before too long and you know i mean it is a very sensible camera which gives you an awful lot of bang for your buck and the bang for your buck some people will say well it comes from it being a 51 megapixel camera as opposed to my nikon d800e which is a lowly uh what 36 megapixels and the, you wouldn't even be doing a fair comparison if you shot on the D, d850 well that's because if that's what you think then you too are a knuckle dragging moron because you don't understand the science the nikon d850 is 45 meg this nikon d800e is 36 meg but this 36 meg sensor is made up of photocytes which are physically 4.87 microns across this fuji is made up of photocytes which are actually 5.3 microns across so the photocytes are physically about half a micron bigger or is it 10 percent bigger than the photocytes on the d800e sensor this means that if we actually took the sensor out of this camera and trimmed it down to 35 36 mil by 24 mil and then put it back in the camera this fuji would actually have less megapixels in it than the bloody nikon yes 
Hmm. So it's nothing to do with megapixels, not really. It's to do with the size, the physical area of the real estate that those photo sites are sitting in. And as you can see, the even with theoretically less megapixels per square millimeter, this Fuji camera is actually out resolving the Nikon D800e by a, a noticeable amount. I'm not going to say an excessive amount because it isn't. And these D800e's are spectacular cameras, just as the D850's are. But you will never, ever, ever find a camera ever with a sensor that size that will kill off medium format, much to the direct contradiction of Flowboy, yeah? And what's his face, the silver-haired idiot um, and his missus. There will never be a 35mm FX camera that will rival even a 50 megapixel medium format camera. So uh, there you go. I've had my little rant. I hope that's give you some food for thought. You won't learn very much from this video. It's been very quick because I'm expecting uh, my great friend and uh, most worshipful colleague uh, here any moment now. I've just had a text from him if you heard a little ding on my mobile uh, a while ago. So um, I better pack up and put all his gear away before he finds out I've been raiding it. Okay, so hope that's proved a little bit interesting for you guys. And uh, I shall see you again next week when we'll come back with something that, um, yeah, again, hopefully you'll learn from. But this was just a video to give you a little bit of food for thought. Alrighty, speak to you soon. Be good. Tooroo.